It started out being actually terrifying. This is, without a doubt, the most complicated project that I have ever been a part of. One, two. I made a big mistake in Africa. I misjudged the flight and I impacted at terminal velocity. When I heard the bang and I couldn't see Jeb, I knew I had just lost my best friend. When I realized Jeb was alive, it was a great relief, but none of us have any idea how long the road to the recovery would be. He didn't really calculate as he should have. And as a consequence, you know, he paid it. He paid the price. During Jeb's recovery, the wingsuit world kept evolving, but it was without him. And for someone who's always lived an active life, it started to take its mental toll. I was in pain, like super bad pain all the time. Like it kind of changed me as a person. I didn't really understand the change until I went through the pain. It changed the way that Jeb is. A few months before his accident, Jeb had performed an amazing stunt being the first person to fly through an enclosed formation. He was extremely popular in China and they wanted to see more of him. Jeb needed a goal to find his motivation. And a year later, we found it. The Flying Dagger. It was truly an insane project. The crack was 300 meters long, and from the top, it was 20 meters wide, and at the bottom, between five and six meters. And what made that jump extra challenging was the fact that the 300 meters in altitude had to be enough for Jeff to fly through the crack, open his parachute, turn around his canopy, and make a landing into a small, tiny landing area that was about one meter wide. After I hit Table Mountain, the, the response to that should have been, stop. But I won't, I won't stop. After months of physiotherapy, Chip had finally recovered and his training for China began in Switzerland. We went out of our way to assist Chip to practice safely for the stunt. So I basically started getting to the point where I was actually getting stronger and started feeling like I was before the accident. I did all my rehab, and now all of a sudden I'm feeling this sensation of like, wow, I'm getting back to what I was before. And sure enough, I was like, wow, I, I am, I'm back. This is a very narrow crack that goes for a very long time, so it's a very technically demanding jump. It was scary coming into the Flying Dagger, you know, after going through that experience and seeing what it really means to get hurt. You know, what it means to go from being an active athlete, you know, to being able to do whatever you want with your body and, and, and your body just does what you want it to do, to being crippled. And you're going into a stunt that very likely could put you right back to where you were, you know, six months ago, you know. And breaking my legs there was a very real possibility. On the event day, the weather was horrible. When it came time to deliver for hundreds of millions of viewers around the world, we had to pull the plug. We just could not do it. It's like this nightmarish. I swear to God, it's driving me nuts. I was just totally deflated, and I just kind of realized, okay, well, this, this is it. We can't do this stunt. It's impossible, you know? Okay, copy that. We'll turn around and come back down. Like, it was very upsetting to, to realize that I was going to 
Fail. The wind here in landing area has improved. One minute before the cutoff time, a miracle happened. And we got our window. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, like, it nice. became a really strange, like, emotional feeling, like, shit, it looks like I have to go for this now. All of a sudden, I got this really powerful sense of just dread. That I just kind of found this place in my mind where it's like, I don't know, like it's happening. I'm doing this.